honestly, this was just one of the coolest experiences yeah. ever. Tacos. Woo! <laughs> Well, it is our last day on the big island. It's a big <laughs> But we are starting the last day at what is called the Green Sand Beach, otherwise known as Papa Colea Beach. I think that's how you say it. So we debated back and forth if we were going to come to this beach for a couple of reasons. So it's a two to three mile hike, or maybe walk's a better term, out to the beach. So you park in this dirt parking lot and then it's two to three miles. We haven't really found a solid answer of how far it is to the beach. And then we also hear that it doesn't always look green. It's maybe more of like an olive or a goldeny green color. I think it depends on the lighting. So we hear from some people it's not worth the trek out there, but I really wanted to see it. We just kind of wanted to see we for ourselves. We wanted to find out for ourselves, yeah. yeah. So. But it's quite a trek out here from where we were, especially in Hilo. But you get out here and it's beautiful country getting out here. And so we showed up, but uh, it's like not hurricane force, but <laughs> it might not be far off. It's pretty windy it's out there. The trees so are like windy. gripping to the ground. They're trying to stay in the ground. And I don't know, we should have brought a, a, a squirrel suit or something to <laughs> fly <What>? there. <laughs> yeah, it's so, I think the path to the beach is really dusty and there's mm -hmm. dust flying everywhere. So we'll see how it's this, gonna be we'll an see adventure. How this goes. <laughs> an experience <laughs> so we just left the beach we're on our walk back we wanted to vlog more of our journey there we had all these ideas of like cool drone shots to get yeah but my dad thinks the gusts are 50 miles per hour yeah i'm no meteorologist but <laughs> oh it's 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 really windy, <laughs> really yeah. windy. I mean, like 20 to 30 mile an hour winds and then like 50 mile an hour gusts it's like <laughs> it's tough because you're walking you're, on the way out we were walking against the wind at least like it's like a cross but in your face and then like you get to some really dusty parts and especially at the beach it like kicks up the sand and it's just like it's needles in, and daggers all in, in your me. eyes my mouth yeah. all over my skin and then it yeah it just kind of stabs you like daggers because it's have like pretty a, sharp you have like a i have like a dusting of dirt <laughs> on me <laughs> we're hiding behind this like dirt wall like a, right like now a berm, yeah. that's protecting us from the wind so we can talk because it was just way too windy to even talk on the camera yeah. on the way there but that was, I think, it was totally worth totally it. Totally worth it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like most of the most when most of the time when people come out here, it's not this windy, but I don't know. It was fun. It made Added it more memorable. It. Yeah, never forget it. Yeah. So one thing we wanted to mention is why the sand is green, and we actually both agreed that the sand did look kind of green, like yeah. kind of like a darker olive green. Mm -hmm. There were these like flecks of gold in it, so it kind of had this like shimmery, sparkly look. Yeah. But it's green because it has this thing called olivine, I believe is the name, inside of it. So when you pick it up, you can kind of see some of the crystals in there. Yeah. It's really neat. This is one of four green sand beaches in the entire world. The other ones are in Guam, the Galapagos, and Norway. So we'll have to go check those All ones over, out next. Yeah. But we're about to make our trek back. It was about an hour walk or so out here. Yeah. Not too bad, very breezy, so it helped with the sun, and the sun was kind of covered. But we hear that it's best to come early because the walk back in the sun can be really, really hot and brutal. There's no cover. Yeah, as so. you can tell, the clouds have kind of passed a little bit from earlier, and so it's it's going to be a little bit warmer on the yeah. way back. And But I'm so glad we did this. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> this, is awesome. this is probably my favorite beach we've seen, so yeah. I'm glad we made the trek. Most unique, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. We made it back to the car. We are very dirty, but we made it. One thing I think I forgot to mention is that the hike to the beach really isn't that bad. Uh, like we said earlier, it's between two or three miles. We're not totally sure. It is 
pretty flat, some uphill, it's just mostly dirty, but you are along the ocean the whole time. So you have really nice views, even though you're kind of just walking on dirt for like an hour or so. Also, when you get to the beach, you'll see that you can get down to the beach and it looks kind of scary from afar, but when you actually go to the top of the beach, there's a staircase to go down and then you basically just step down a bunch of rocks to get to the bottom. It's way easier than it looks from afar, so don't let it scare you at first. Definitely go up to it and try it. Uh, all four of us did it just fine and some of us are a little more scaredy cat than others. <laughs> All right, after our gusty, windy, wind-blown <laughs> hike, we worked up quite an appetite and we drove north to just south of Kona to the Captain Cook area for, you know what, tacos. Woo! <laughs> These look delicious. We're at a place called Shaka Tacos. It's a little food truck, but behind the food truck, they have this area where you can sit inside or you can sit outside on this patio and they have a kind of a bar with bar stool situation mm -hmm. overlooking the ocean. Pretty so, sick, tacos with a view today. Mm -hmm. We both got four tacos, although we wanted 10, but we're <laughs> self-control. We hopefully have more treats coming later today. Mm -hmm. I got one fish, one pork, one asada, one chicken. So one, one of just each. About everything, yeah, one yeah. of each. And I was very impressed with myself for getting fish. I give you props. I'm, I'm growing up, you guys, I'm growing up. <laughs> yeah, and I got two asada and that's beef and two uh, fish, of course. They say they're the best fish tacos on the island, right? Yeah, on the island, we will acclaimed, see. widely acclaimed, she said. We will see. We have so. not had many fish tacos on the island, but they're very colorful looking. The tortillas look really good. Yeah, they put all kinds of Lots of good sauces and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Let's eat. Good hunk of fish in there. Mm. I saw I like all the goodies on there. The fish is, I don't know what kind of fish it is, but it's like a white fish. Good flavor to it. Soft, fresh, excellent. I'll try the fish one first as well. I haven't had many fish tacos in my day, so I don't have much to compare it to, but we'll see. It's definitely not too fishy at all, which is a huge win in my book. All the sauces and the guacamole on top, which by the way, the guacamole was free. When does that ever happen? It just tastes awesome. It has such good flavor. I definitely like my fish tacos with more sauces on them to try to mask any fishy taste it might have. But the texture is really good. The flavor is amazing. I really like this tortilla. It has a little bit of a crunch to it. It yeah. looks like they threw it on the grill or something. I don't know if it's homemade or not, but it looks incredible. It's a corn tortilla. Mm. I love this place. And this little guy right here is trying to steal our tacos. He just wagged his tail at me. He's so cute. Not today, little buddy. Those were some of the best tacos I've had in a long time. All four of the meats I tried were so delicious. I, I can't really pick a favorite one. Yeah. They're all so good. Highly recommend if you're in the area. And bonus points, if for whatever reason you're here by yourself, you'll have friends because on <laughs> where we were eating on the little back porch, there was geckos all over the place. They were like four so of cool. <laughs> we could have sat there and watched them forever. They were the cutest little they come, They come right up to you. So. Yeah, I think they wanted our tacos, for real. <laughs> like, they didn't want the lettuce, they wanted the tacos. <laughs> For all of you coffee drinkers out there, you've probably heard of something called Kona coffee. And Kona coffee is a coffee that's only grown in the Kona region of the island of Hawaii, also known as the Big Island. And it's one of the most expensive coffees in the world. It's not uncommon to find a bag for like 30 plus dollars. We've seen some, <laughs> some pretty expensive yeah. ones since we've been here. And today we're going on a coffee tour. And if you're new here or if you just don't know, we named our dog Kona because of our love of coffee and Hawaii. <laughs> and so we're here at Heavenly Hawaiian Coffee Farm to get a tour and try a bunch of coffee. Yeah, they've already given us a bunch of samples, so I'm yeah. really excited. <laughs> we're already buzzed. <laughs> It turns out our tour guide lived a block from us in Seattle, so that is crazy, small world. And before we get started, they have a guava tree and we picked some guava. My dad got one down for me. 
So we just went through the tour, which was completely awesome. Amazing. So they walk you through like the whole process. So starting with, they walk you down to some of the trees down there. <clears throat> and so your little coffee 101 goes <laughs> like this. So they're looking for the coffee uh, berry to be ripe, which is a dark red hue. Okay, so they pick it from the tree there. They process it and then they dry it for two weeks on what's called a hashidana. And that's just like a basically like a deck and it dries the bean out. And you rake it. Yeah, you rake it so that often. it dries yeah. evenly. And then they store it for 60 days down in their vault. They didn't show us the vault, but <laughs> we believe them. And so then it's processed again where they peel off two of the dry layers uh, that, that comes off and then it's ready to be roasted. We have a cheat sheet. Cheat sheet. <laughs> Alex from the coffee bar, or who works here, yeah. helped us out a little bit because yeah. it was a lot of information that we learned at once and yeah. we got to see them roast it. And what was really cool about the roasting is the guy who was roasting uses this really old machine mm -hmm. and it's not like the high tech new machines where no. there's all this technology. He doesn't do temperature, like he doesn't There's no check gauges, the there's no temperature gauge, there's no machines, timers, nothing. It's all by feel. Yeah, so it's a true art form. He's been doing this for, he learned 15 years ago, his dad's been doing it for like Yeah, he learned from his dad and his dad actually traded like bags of coffee for this machine. And uh, the inside of the drum is like a cast iron drum. He learned from his dad, he would roast the pea berries in it. And so, cause he wanted to train and learn like with the best berry. So what he does like to test the temperature, all he does is take his hand, tap the outside to feel how hot it is. Yeah, and It's he like also, all by feel. He's also listening to like a cracking sound yeah, the with first the beans. Crack. And he was telling us like the light roast will be like slightly chewy and then, you know, more crunchy the more you go on. And so he'll pop one in his mouth mm -hmm. to test it and he'll be like, oh, that's a little chewy and he spits it out. Yeah. So he tries to never have it touch his tongue cause it's really, really yeah. hot. I was floored it's, when I saw him throw it in straight from the mouth. thing and then bump. Oh. Yeah, so we got to see him test it, and then when he finally dumped it and getting to see it spin around, he mm -hmm. let us try some yeah. of the freshly roasted ones. Honestly, this was just one of the coolest experiences yeah. ever. Um, this and the manta rays were probably like my two favorite things we did on this trip. Yeah. This tour was 100% free. Mm -hmm. So we, we spent a lot of money in their gift shop buying some treats and some coffee mm -hmm. for when we get home, but it was worth it because our tour guide, Melissa, was incredible. Yeah. She's the one who lived right by us in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And then Alex was also really helpful in the coffee bar, kind of talking us through the process to do mm -hmm. the pour over mm -hmm. and all of that. So heavenly Hawaiian. Yep coffee farm but you mentioned the treats though yes. while you're here you don't just get to sample some of the coffee they give you as much as you want really when you walk up they greet you right when you get here but like throughout the tour like before and after you get to try all their little treats that they make with the coffee yeah this was just awesome experience yeah. could not recommend it more yeah if you're gonna come and do a coffee tour come for and this even one. if you don't really like coffee that much yeah, my mom doesn't drink coffee yeah. she still really enjoyed it and she had a few sips and she kind of liked it so yeah. the treats are good whether you like coffee or not but yeah come for the just the smells alone yeah. like we, when he was roasting down there he had a like a big bag of the coffee that was just roasted and he, he lets you stick your head in the bag and it's just oh it smells yeah. so good mm, that smells so good <laughs> we could talk about this all day yeah. so we'll stop <laughs> we'll stop now but heavenly hawaiian mm -hmm. coffee farm amazing everyone's so friendly yep. it's just oh <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so man, on our original itinerary, we planned to spend one hour at the coffee farm, <laughs> but uh, at the end of it all, we ended up spending three hours there. <laughs> they just like treat you like family, treat you like friends. You can hang out all day if you want. You can go through the tour, stay and drink some more coffee, all the coffee you want. It was just incredible. Yeah, we could go on and on like we said we earlier about how amazing guests, yeah. it was, but just go. You'll yeah. absolutely love it. By the time we left, we only had about an hour of daylight or sunlight left. So we drove north to this beach called Kua Bay. We came here on our first day, but we didn't vlog that day at all. And we wanted to just get one more glimpse of it before we fly out in like six hours. We still have yeah. a lot of time left, yeah. but it'll, be, it'll dark. be dark. So we're just gonna chill here for the next hour. Soak up our last one. Uh, soak up the last Hawaiian views, mm -hmm. maybe catch a sunset. It's a bit cloudy, yeah. but we'll it's see okay. what happens. There's no, no bad sunset in Hawaii. No. <laughs> trip it's a sad day sad time right now we came to like a hawaiian style type restaurant it's called broke the mouth grinds it looks so good 
I got the uh, uh, garlic furikake chicken. It's fried chicken. That's hurricane style. This is garlic butter shrimp. It's tuna mac salad. And then I upgraded to the fried kimchi rice. It looks so good. This furikake chicken is their specialty. It's like on their t-shirt. They love it so much. And I got their braised short ribs, which are boneless. So all this meat right here is just straight up meat, no bones to pick around. And then kulua pork, which is a classic Hawaiian dish that I absolutely love. And I just got boring white rice in a salad that comes with this papaya dressing that looks pretty dang good. The short rib just falls apart with the fork. Mm, it's really, really good. And the pork is super, super, super juicy. All right, let's see if this chicken lives up to the t-shirt hype. See if it's worthy to put on a t-shirt. <laughs> I would definitely put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> The outside's crispy. Got some extra skin here. The flavors are just, they got, I got the hurricane style. I mean, they put like, I guess, maybe extra furikake and some other sauces on there. Sriracha and some other aioli. Bomb, broke them out. All right, we are back at the airport, getting ready to load up on the plane, head back to the mainland. It's a sad day, but it was another amazing, amazing trip. It has taken us a while to get to the island of Hawaii, aka the big island, but I'm so glad we finally made it here. Yeah, I think about our previous trips to the other Hawaiian islands and I can usually be like, oh, this one was like a cross between this one and this one, but the big island, I just I can't put my finger on it. I don't know, it's like, it's a little bit different than the others. It's so diverse. I mean, all the islands are diverse and we mm -hmm. love them all equally but differently. And, yeah. But this one just had some really unique things like all the lava fields and the volcanoes and the manta rays and tons of waterfalls and beautiful beaches yeah. and cliffs it was just it had a little bit of everything yeah. which was really fun tons of nature awesome food we met a lot of friendly people yeah. the Kona coffee's awesome yeah, it's the best. <laughs> we've published quite a few blog posts about our trip to hopefully help you plan your own trip here in the future so if you're headed here sometime soon check those out we'll link to those below we just love this state so so much and we know we have many oh, yeah. more Hawaii trips <laughs> we'll be back. in our future but for now, it is time to leave, unfortunately, but we will see you guys next time. We drove north to just south of Kona, right? Yeah, to the Captain Hook. Nope. Captain Not Cook <laughs> area. <Dang it. laughs> Captain <laughs> Hook. <laughs> right? Did we get it right? Yeah. <laughs> Pick it from there, and then they take it over to the Hoshimoto. Hoshidana. Hoshidana, where it dries. And then they take it to the Hoshimoto. Hoshidana. Hoshidana. I don't know where I get moto. <laughs> and then they take them to the Hoshidana. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Alex made this for us. She's, she's awesome. She's and making she's, sure we're she's correct. Our making sure straight. we're getting our facts right. <laughs> the short rib just falls apart when you put the fork on it like butter. Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>